Welcome to part 48 of this read-through and peer review of Kent Hobbit's doctoral dissertation, which was published on Wikileaks.org on December the 9th, 2009. If you have not yet seen the previous parts in this series, then I recommend that you go back and see those first, as in this episode, I will be starting off exactly where I finished off in the last. In the last episode, Kent blamed evolution for communism. He continues in this episode. Carry on, Kent. Someone credits Vladimir Lenin with the following commentary on Darwin. Someone, Kent. May I remind you that this is your doctoral dissertation. It is your job to tell us exactly who it was. But anyway, Darwin put an end to the belief that the animal-vegetable species bear no relation to one another, except by chance, and that they were created by God and are hence immutable. Communism has its roots in evolution. Yes, Kent, hard as it is to believe, animal and vegetable species do share a common ancestor. This does not mean to say that a kangaroo evolved from a turnip, or that a turnip could, in theory, evolve from a kangaroo. That would be ridiculous. Plants and animals do not evolve into each other. You see, Kent, at the very basic nature, plant cells and animal cells are essentially the same. However, plant cells have certain adaptions, and animal cells have others. Ultimately, both plant and animal species can be traced back to a single-cell predecessor, and those single-cell predecessors can be traced back to a common predecessor, and therefore this notion is not as crazy as you make it out to be. But anyhow, we'll continue. The effects that evolution has had on our society, just with the three that I've mentioned here, Hitler, Stalin and communism, are incredible. The human lives that have been lost cannot be calculated, nor can the money that has been spent fighting communism and Nazism be calculated. Well, Kent, where, where can I start? National Socialism, in, in its dangerous form, as was seen with the Nazis, has only really been around about 18, 90 years, so yes, we can calculate it. Communism has been around roughly about the same, and so therefore we can calculate it, and same with the lives that have been lost. We only really have to look back maybe a hundred years. What is difficult to calculate, what is virtually impossible to calculate, are the number of lives that have been lost to religious persecution, religious wars. All those people that have died in the surefire belief that their god is the right one and yours isn't. Likewise with the money that has been spent. How much money has been spent on religion, nobody will ever know. One thing is for sure, though, is that the majority of religious institutions around the world are some of the richest institutions in the world. I think George Carling put it best when he said that hmm, God is all-powerful, all-loving, all-forgiving. He needs your love, he needs your worship, he needs your obedience, but most of all, he needs your money. Lots and lots of money. But I digress. It staggers the imagination to think of the effects that evolution has had on our society. Yes, Kent, indeed it does, and the majority of them are all beneficial. 
creation versus evolution is an extremely important discussion and debate. No, Kent, it isn't. Not really. It's only an important discussion and debate in your mind. For the rest of us, you're just a bunch of funny fucktards and, well, you just get sidelined. What is important is when people with your way of thinking, with your ideas, get into positions of power. You see, Kent, you need to keep those people that think that their deity of choice, Jesus, whoever, will turn up and usher them personally into a heavenly abyss upon the end of the world, as far away from the nuclear button as is humanly possible. You see, Kent, when Peter Sutcliffe, otherwise known as the Yorkshire Ripper, told an astounded judge and jury that God told him to murder 13 prostitutes, they threw him into Broadmoor Mental Asylum basically for the rest of his life. When George W. Bush and Tony Blair told an astounded audience that God told them to invade Iraq, which led to the death of thousands, countless thousands of people, then nothing really happened. Which is deeply wrong. But the basic point is, if you are hearing voices in your head telling you to kill people, then you should really be locked up. But do carry on. We are setting the trap for young people by teaching them evolution in school. We are destroying our own future by presenting this ridiculous doctrine as a scientific fact. The effect on society alone is tremendous. Yes, Kent, indeed it is. And if you personally want to live as a Bronze Age goatherd and go back to those particular times then, I'm sure there's enough people that will put their hands in the, their pockets to buy you a tent, some goats, and send you off to the middle of the desert. I, I recommend that you do it, actually, Kent. It'd save us all a lot of grief. But anyhow, the philosophy of origins that a person chooses also has an effect on many other decisions he or she makes. Yes, Kent. It's usually the difference between an informed decision and one that isn't. But do go on. The people that are divided on whether they believe that abortion is right or wrong are generally divided into the same groups that form over the issue of creation and evolution. Yes, it's strange as that, isn't it, Kent? We'll pick up on that later. If a person believes that we are a creation of God, then of course abortion is wrong. I'm sure they do, Kent, except, of course, when God does it in the form of a miscarriage. But anyway, if a person believes that evolution is true, that we just evolved with blind chance, then abortion would be fine. Yes, Kent, because all atheists, all evolutionists, are just a bunch of baby killers, aren't we? The abortion issue really needs to be argued on creation-evolution grounds first. So, not on the health and well-being of the mother, then? Of course not. Why would religious institutions tend to be run by men? And, of course, what effect does the, the health of a woman have on a man? It's, of course, so easy to turn around and say, you must keep the child when it's not really your life that's been affected. But do go on. The same could be said for many other issues of life, like euthanasia, drugs, teen sex, homosexuality, etc. Yes, I'm sure, Kent. Because, of course, the validity of a talking snake in a magical garden makes all the difference, doesn't it, Kent? <laughs>